What's up guys, Andre here, and today I want to show you how to use the Google Maps API within Laravel. Now you're probably thinking, isn't the Google Maps API for JavaScript? Yes, it is indeed for JavaScript, and I highly encourage you learn how to use it with, with JavaScript. If you're interested, definitely take a look at Traversy Media's videos, which I will link to below. So why would I want to do it in PHP or Laravel? One reason is maybe you're more familiar with PHP and you want to utilize Google Maps within PHP. That's fine. You can go ahead and do that. But let me show you my specific reason for needing to do it with a backend language. The short answer is I needed to cache geocode requests. So geocoding is the process of transforming a description of a location, typically an address, into longitude and latitude coordinates so Google Maps can place it. If you take a look here, you'll see that there is a limit of 2,500 requests per day. And let me show you an example of one of my applications that can quickly go over this limit. So here's an example of what my application might look like at a certain point. There's about 50 markers on here, and the majority of them don't change. The only one that changes often is this one marked O. And if you do the math, 2500 divided by 50 is 50. So if there's 50 visitors to my site, I will already be at the 2500 limit. So it would definitely make sense if I use some sort of caching so I don't hit that limit. So there was a very popular package back in the CodeIgniter days, rest in peace CodeIgniter, that actually did this very well. I used it and I found it very easy to work with and I wanted to find something that was ported over to Laravel. There are a few, but there's only one that supports caching. Um, there's definitely room for improvement, but we are limited because we don't have any other options. Definitely take a look at the other ones if you don't need caching. So let's go ahead and start. So this is the package that we're going to use here. I have a fresh Laravel installation here, so let's go ahead and install it. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna compose or require it. Make sure you use Dev Master. I actually put a pull request in there to fix one of the things that wasn't working. So make sure you use Dev Master. Let's add the service provider here. So config app. Somewhere down here. Now, usually you don't have to do this in Laravel 5.5, but for some reason I can't get it working, so I have to put these in. So that's that. Let's put the facade in down here. All right, now let's get started. Make sure to also do a PHP artisan vendor publish because there's actually Let's pick um, it's the first one, one, because there's actually a migration in there that we have to use when we want to make use of caching. All right, now if you look, there's a new config called Google Maps within your config directory. And this should be in an environment file, but make sure you go ahead and use your own Google API key. And yeah, let's go ahead and start. So the first thing we have to do is set up some config, and that is done using a config array. So something like this. First, we're going to set up the center of the map, and I'm just going to use Air Canada Center Toronto. This is where our local sports teams play. The next thing we want is a zoom level. So we'll have a zoom level of, uh, set it, I think the scale is one to 20, but we'll send it to, set it to 14. The next thing we wanna do is a map height and send it, set it to like 500 pixels. You can also do map width, but by default that's 100%, but if you want to set it, you can set it. Let's just ignore that. Uh, one more thing we want to add is a 
just want to turn the scroll wheel off. So scroll wheel, set it to false. Okay. And now we can do something like this gmaps initialize the config. Okay. Now we're going to create the map. So we'll save it to a variable named map. gmaps create underscore map. And we're going to pass it to the view. That's why I left it there. But we're going to pass it with the map variable. Okay, and let's go to welcome. We don't need the styles. We need that. We don't need any of this. Okay, so do two things here. We have to pass in the the HTML. There's a key called HTML. Make sure we escape it. And we also have to inject the JavaScript and there's a key called JavaScript. And if we did that correctly, that should show a map. And there you go. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to change the zoom level of this. There should be more zoomed in. There you go. Uh, you can add more properties. Definitely took a look at the documentation. Um, the package documentation is not the greatest, but if you look at the original documentation, yeah, I know it's in Code Igniter, but uh, this documentation is actually actually pretty good, and it's pretty straightforward how to transfer it from Code Igniter to Laravel. Let's go ahead and add a marker. So we, it's all array based. So we'd set a position. Um, let's set it to Air Canada Center again. This time there'll be a marker on it. And let's set an info window, which is when you click on it, a pop up will come up. So it'll be info window content. And let's just say Air Canada Center. And we do g maps add underscore marker marker. Okay, and see how it looks. There you go, there's a marker right there. Let's zoom out a bit. Okay. You can also easily add multiple markers. So if you just copy this and change the information, let's do CN Tower. And we'll just do that CN Tower. That's pretty straightforward. There you go. I forgot to show you the info window. It's just, it pops up when you click it. You can also add a custom icon if you like. So if you just do icon and set it to a URL, um, it'll set that. Now, if you go to this site here, you can just grab one of these. There's a whole bunch here and use it straight from Google. So if you want this green pin here, just grab this copy link address and let's paste it in here. Okay, check out our map. And this one should be green. There you go. Now if you look at the original screenshot I showed you, you'll see a bunch of labels here, um, which are generated dynamically. I'll show you how to do that as well. Now, full disclosure, the way I'm doing it is probably not the best way because I am using a deprecated API, which still works, but it's deprecated and I don't know, one time it might just stop working. But I just find it much easier to use. Uh, here's an example. So this is an example of an icon that's generated dynamically. If I change this to Ho, you can see the label changes here and we can just drop this into our 
into our into our URL for the marker. And there's a few options here. Look at the documentation. Um, but I'll just show you here. Like for example, this I think changes the rotation. Yeah, see that's rotation. Um, this changes the scale, I believe. So if I were to do like 1.5, that'll be much bigger. There you go. And I just find it's much easier to use than what the current non-deprecated way is to, to do it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me just show you that it works. We'll put this in the other marker. So right here, marker icon. Just grab that, paste it in. And we'll see one that says ho. There we go. Gigantic hole there. Now let's make use of caching, which is the whole reason we're using PHP in the first place. Um, if you look at the config, there's actually a setting here uh, that, spec that specifies caching, but that actually does not work. Um, the way to do it is within here, uh, just add a new setting called uh, what's it called? Geocode caching and set that to true. Now we're going to utilize caching. Um, if we go back, this is not going to work because it wants access to a database, which we have not yet set up yet. So let's quickly do that. So in my environment file, let's just set the database. We'll make it in, in a second. Google Maps root root. Let's go to SQL Pro. Let's make a new database. Add database. Google Maps. Let's do a PHP artisan migrate. And there we go. We now have new tables for migrations. And now if we refresh, this should work. And now it should be caching it. So if we go back to SQL Pro, we'll see two new entries here, migrations, sorry, right here. See, we see two new, and we can see the latitude and longitude coordinates for each of those locations. And now every time we hit this page, if the location exists in our cache, then we'll pull the location from there, and we're, that's not gonna be counted towards the geocode requests. So let me prove to you that it's actually pulling from here. So if I change the longitude slightly, change it to 78, this one should be moved a bit. See, obviously it's probably not a correct coordinate, but if you put it back, that should work. There you go. And now we're using caching, which was the whole point of using PHP or a backend language. So while we're here, let me just show you a few more features that I think will be useful, um, or ones that I use at least in my app. Uh, one is directions, and let's make a new route here called directions. We can just leave this, leave all of this. We don't need markers for this. And if you look at the documentation, Again, there's some good examples of, where's the directions? Directions, there it is. So we can actually just copy and paste this and it should work. Config directions true and up to there. We can make use of this. So starting from here. Okay. So, yeah, it's true. Let's start at the Air Canada Center, Toronto. Let's end in a mall that's further north. And it specify the ID. Okay. And we're using the same view, but we have to add this directions div. Uh, so all we have to do is add a directions div right here, directions 
div and if I did that correctly there should be directions oh sorry I was on the wrong route so directions there you go there's directions right there to how to get to point A to point B let's do one more for fun let's try circles so circle okay you don't need that first one okay let's go here let's do it up here so circle center will be let's just do it Union Station Toronto which is within the vicinity of everything else circle radius and all we have to do is gmaps add underscore circle circle that should add a circle see if that worked back to the other route and there you go so yeah definitely take a look at all the examples here and they're supposed to map one to one with the JavaScript API and hopefully whatever you need is working for you. So there you have it guys, we've managed to use Google Maps API from within Laravel and leverage some of its features. I hope this was useful to you and I hope you can start using it in your application. Please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, thanks, bye.